Hey, welcome everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are in the Palo Alto studio for a CUBE conversation. We're going to take a little bit of a different tack than our normal tech conferences, but really kind of along the same theme with, with women in tech and, and diversity and really getting to better outcomes. But we're going to talk about the advertising industry, which is a little bit different for us. We're, we're really excited to have Kat Gordon, the founder of the 3% Conference, join us in the studio. Welcome, Kat. Thank you. So for the people that aren't familiar with the 3% Conference, why don't you just give them kind of the, uh, the 411. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So I launched it in 2012, um, and the number 3% refers to how many creative directors and ad agencies at the time were female. So out of 100% of creative directors, only 3% were women. And the reason that it just bugged me for a long time was because I knew that the consumer marketplace, which advertising is supposed to motivate, is primarily female. Right. So you have mostly these ideas that spring from a male sensibility trying to motivate a female marketplace and I just couldn't understand not an activist movement not a I'm female and it should be different kind of like business suicide why are we doing this I, I am part of that 3% worked as a creative director for 25 years and just could not understand why my industry did not see the imperative to put women in top leadership positions on the creative side. Now that's so, it seems so bizarre, but I guess not, we've all watched Mad Men now on TV, right? Yes. So uh, we saw the the budding the budding creative director trying to break on the scene. But you would think with, with again, women controlling, and I know it's more than 50% of the household spend or whatever the historical numbers are, that that wouldn't be the case. So you would have more women involved in the creative to touch that. So right. is it just a legacy thing? I mean, why, it's, why do you think that happened? Because you look at like retail, like in Macy's or yes. Nordstrom's, there's a ton of women in senior management coming yep. up through the buyer ranks. Why do you think it's that way? Um, well, it's I know why it's that way, because I've done research about it, and it's part of a legacy problem, which you alluded to, kind of the swagger of the madman era, and that a creative leader is perceived to be a dude. Um, and then it's also just a lack of support for um, motherhood. So a lot of women, once they're eligible to become creative directors, are normally in their childbearing years. And average Advertising has become a very unpredictable kind of life. You know, if you don't sell the concept in meeting one, you're working all weekend or you're on a plane. So it's a difficult field to have a family. And so that's another reason, lack of mentorship um, and just kind of outdated notions of, you know, what creativity looks like. And so, so much of what we see, and we see a 3,000 ads a day, every one of us, including our kids. 3,000. 3,000. And if you start to watch them, you'll notice that there are stereotypes that keep repeating. Um, and one of the reasons why women are needed is just to have a different viewpoint and right. kind of breathe some fresh air into these notions of what we look like as a society. Right. And, and, and not even that so much. We talk about it all the time at tech conferences um, when we cover the women in tech angle. And, and most of them now have either a track, uh, a networking thing, uh, an e evening, a pre-event, but really just the concept of diversity of opinion just gets better outcomes. It's really that simple because you know, we all look at things through biased eyes. We can't help it. We've, we've been yes. raised and we've seen things and we've been influenced by, by, by our lives. So you just have to have people that come in that, that put a different lens, a different spin. And, and the stories you hear about people, especially when they're doing workshops and things, that come out from the quiet person in the back of the room that never really had an opportunity to say things, a huge impact and, and really can change the game. That's exactly right. And um, there's tons of research from Harvard and Catalyst about diverse perspectives actually not only create better ideas faster, they also result in better error detection in businesses like tech. So um, I think one of the things that happens in advertising, if you're a creative in advertising, you're often working odd hours and it's almost a very intense, intimate relationship you have as a creative team, art director, copywriter. And so a lot of times you work with someone that you just would want to hang out with late at night and so you hire someone that looks like you and what's sad about that is that I always say that if two people have the same kind of background then one of them is redundant in the idea making sessions so you need that otherness right you need that discomfort right so it's it's interesting in, in preparing for this interview I was, I was reminded we did a, 
a show at, at SAP Silicon Valley where they invited the makers organization who's the leading kind of women's centric documentary company with PBS uh, for a screening of I think it's called uh, makers in America women who make uh, an American business they have lots of them for different categories and one of the women they they profiled is uh, Mary Wells Lawrence who is from the advertising agency uh, kick and tail uh, her kind of breakthrough campaign was the brand if, uh, if everybody remembers it, everybody's probably too young colored planes um, really dressing up the the flight attendants and and did great and the boss said I'll pay you the money um, we'll recognize you but we're not going to give you the title and, mm. and so she had to quit and start her own firm which was very very Mary, successful yes. Lawrence Wells Rich Green yeah blah, Lawrence blah, Wells yeah. it's like yeah. a law firm right <laughs> uh, Wells Rich Green yes. but the, the the campaigns are are so iconic you yes. know pop off his fizz fizz with Alka-Seltzer and um, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. I mean, these things that, that, that to me just kind of represent television in the 70s and the 80s. So you would think that that would start to change it, but you're, when is your 3% number measured? It doesn't sound like things are really changed. Right. Um, well, we did, we have made a dent, which is nice. Uh, the number of female creative directors in America is now up to 11%. Oh, okay. That's good. Um, but there's absolutely no reason why it should not be 50%. And unlike tech, tech has a pipeline problem. Tech is trying to get young girls interested interested. There are more young women graduating from portfolio centers than young men. So I almost find that the most criminal thing about the problem I'm trying to solve for is that we have the women, we train them, they're skilled, they have the great portfolios, and we hemorrhage them right when they're most valuable. And so it's a fixable problem, which is the good news. Right, um, right. So yes, but I know um, Mary Wells, Mary Wells Lawrence. Mary Wells Lawrence, yes. yes. Better pull I met on her um, at the Cannes Advertising Festival last summer. It was a thrill to meet her because she is a legend. Yeah, flick your bick, uh, the Midas touch. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Now, what's interesting is the the tech side would also say it's really not a pipeline problem. Um, hmm. That it is this retention problem, and in fact, I, I can't remember one of the Ivies. I think just graduated more women computer engineers than they did men. So, but I think it's some of the stuff that you talk about. It's it's hitting the ceiling. It's 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 leaving to raise babies. Um, right. And you know, we were just talking about before. You know, Marissa Meyer says she works 130 hours a week, but she's got two kids. So. You know, where does that kind of shake out? That's not necessarily a good thing. Right. Um, so talk about the conference a little bit and how you guys are trying to take specific steps to address the issue, yep. help the women that are there, help the employees, help move that number. Right. So or employers. Excuse me. <laughs> we have kind of what I call our nuclear weapon. And it's a document, a living document, called 100 Things. And it literally are, it's micro actions, small things that any company, outside of advertising, tech, anywhere, can implement to create more more inclusive cultures. Um, and these are things that we have either witnessed through our traveling events. We've been to every major US city and put on an event. We've been to London. We're going to Toronto later this month. And so we listen, and we hear what are the things that people are saying they need or crave, or what are the programs that are creating traction. And it's microactions. It's doing microactions with consistency. But I would say that the number one thing we advocate for, and we did our own research about around this, is that if you have 25% or more women in leadership in a company, all of the other things that the women that work there tell us they care about improve. They self-correct. And so the fastest way you can actually keep women in any company is put women into leadership. That's funny. We were at the uh, the Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference uh, earlier this year in Phoenix, and there's a group called the, I was looking at the Athena Foundation, I think it's called. Um, oh, yeah. I'm familiar. And they're all about getting women in boards, right? It, yep. It's really getting them in at the board level. Uh, yeah. Very different than, say, the Anita Borg Institute, which is much more focused on, you know, kind of entry level and, and really engineering side. But, you know, one of the things Anita Borg did do is they put in place basically a scorecard where companies can go in, do the survey, score themselves, and then report back. And I, th I thought what was really interesting is, you know, a few companies are going to win, uh, and they announce them at their, their Women of Vision Awards um, 
I think uh, uh, Mellon Bank won it a couple years ago. I can't remember who won this last year. But more importantly, it, it provides a baseline. Yeah. It provides uh, a company that cares, a score, and something that they can work against. And you know, we've had Kim Stevenson on from Intel a number of times and, and, and talking about really what Intel's trying to do. But most importantly is to, is to establish a baseline. You yes. know, start to put the measures in place so that you can actually see whether you're moving the needle or not. Completely. And we have just done something similar at 3% where we did a benchmarking study, exactly what you're describing, where ad agencies uh, spoke to us under confidentiality about, you know, different metrics so that we would create a baseline for the industry. And now we're opening up a certification program where agencies can ask us voluntarily to assess them, how they're doing against these key metrics that matter to the retention of women. And then those that are doing well and demonstrating leadership will be 3% certified. Um, but you're right. I mean, the tech world took a beating in the news when they started to reveal their diversity numbers. And I was cheering from the sidelines because that's the absolute necessary first step before right. you can improve at anything. It's like if you want to go on a diet, you got to get on the scale at some point and find out how bad it is. Because it's never going to get better if you don't right. know how bad it is. Right. And so, right. um, yes, that's exactly what's needed. Okay, good. So, um, Again, just give us the dates of the conference, where yep. people can get more information, how many people you're going to have there, who should attend. Yeah. So the event is on November 3rd and 4th. It's a Thursday and Friday in New York City. It's the weekend. That weekend is the New York City Marathon, so it's a really fun time to be in Manhattan. Um, it's at the Manhattan Center, which is in uh, on 33rd Street. Okay. And it's a two-day event. And we have, on day one, we're trying something new where we have these themed tracks for five hours. And so you basically self-select. You're either a ambassador, meaning a man who has the ability to create change within an agency or a brand culture. Uh, you're a creative director. You're an emerging creative leader. Or you're an HR talent person. And so we're going super deep on the things that would matter to those groups. And then on day two, it's more of a TED Talk style, like great inspirational speakers. We have Adam Grant coming to speak. We have Nyla for Merchant. Um, we have Marley Diaz, who's an 11-year-old social entrepreneur. So the people that should come are people who have a vested interest in their company in innovation. Truly, it's that, and men and women of all ages, you don't have to be a creative, but if you work in a company that's trying to breathe innovation, right. there will be amazing takeaways Excellent. from our conference. So I'm going to ask you one more question before I let you go. Um, mentorship versus sponsors. How do you see the difference? How do you see that playing out? How important uh, is it to have both of those things within uh, an, a, a changing culture within an organization? Right. So the way I, the definition I heard that sticks with me and I like is a mentor is somebody who talks with you and a sponsor is someone who talks about you, normally when you're not in the room. So that's the person who's going to advocate for you when a promotion is available or when funding is available or when a transfer opportunity to another office is available. I think that's decidedly more um powerful is to have someone in a position of authority that's in the meetings where decisions get made, knowing who you are, believing in your potential, and advocating for right. you. And sometimes knowing better than you know yourself, yes. right, to, what to you're put capable you in a position where you may not know you're ready to go. All right, well, Kat, well, thanks for uh, stopping by and spending sure. a few minutes, and we look forward to uh, keeping track of the 3% conference, and hopefully you got a terrific event. Oh, I want to tell you the URL. Did I? No, did you tell, tell us sorry, the URL? I didn't. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. It's so the number three, the word percent, and then C-O-N-F, so it's 3%conf.com. You can read the full agenda, buy tickets, see who's speaking. Okay, great. Well, the guys will put that on the lower third, so we'll uh, make sure we capture it. So, again, Alrighty. thanks for uh, stopping by. Sure. Thanks for having me. All right. She's Kat Gordon. I'm Jeff Freak. You're watching The Cube. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.